Good day students. Myself Dr. Monica Khetarpal. I am associate professor of physics in Government Dungar College Bikaner. I welcome you all in the lecture series of MSc Final Physics. We were dealing with ferromagnetic materials. Students, in our today's lecture, we will discuss the exchange and anisotropy energy in ferromagnetic materials. In our last lecture, we have discussed ferromagnetic domains. First of all, I am going to give you a brief look, look out what are ferromagnetic domains. Let us consider that this is a ferromagnetic material. We can divide this ferromagnetic material into small number of regions which are termed as domains. Each domain that means each small region has a magnetization in it and the magnetization is random in all these domains. So, when we have a material, it will be demagnetized because the vector sum of dipole moment of all the domains equal 0. Because the magnetization of individual domains, they are in a random orientation. But what we are doing now, we are applying an external magnetic field. Let us say this is the direction of external magnetic field applied to a ferromagnetic material. We can see that the orientation of magnetic movement changes and they set parallel to the direction of external magnetic field. So, now the material is magnetized that means initially the material which was demagnetic in nature now it has attained a magnetization in it. The overall magnetic dipole moment of this material will be the vector sum of dipole moment of individual domain. So, we can make a magnetic material from a demagnetized state. Now, what is the reason of the occurrence of these domains? In these domains, occurrence occurs so as to minimize the energy. They tend to make a stable state. But it has been found that in the minimization of energy which arises from exchange inter interaction, there are other contributions to the energy. The other contributions, they influence the shape, size, orientation of domain. So, these domains are important in ferromagnetic materials and the total internal energy of domain structure is made up of several contributions which are exchange energy, crystalline energy, domain wall energy and the magnetostriction energy. We will discuss the various factors of energy. First of all, I am going to tell you what is exchange energy. <coughs> As we have seen that in a domain, when no external field is applied, there is a random orientation of magnetic movement of individual domains. Now, the phenomena where individual atomic movement attempt to align all other movement 
within a material with itself is known as exchange interaction now if these magnetic moments all the magnetic moments they align in a parallel fashion then it is familiar that this material will be ferromagnetic in nature considering the second case when the magnetic moments align anti parallel then in this case the material will be anti ferromagnetic in nature suppose we have two spins one denoted by sj and other denoted by sk then we are taking only nearest neighbor interaction and we are ignoring the higher order interactions in this case the interaction between the exchange interaction between the two spins will be hjk to be minus 2j sj dot sk here j is the interaction parameter and the sign of this factor as we have discussed in our earlier lectures it is very important the sign of this factor de decides the nature of the material initially if i am taking j to be positive then in the condition when <coughs> j is positive and since j i am taking to be positive and for the exchange energy to be minimum the two spins must be have a parallel alignment that means the material exhibits ferromagnetic behavior as in this condition the exchange energy will be minimum now i am taking the case in which j is negative then for such a material the spin alignment should be anti parallel then in this case the material will have minimum exchange energy and our material will behave as anti ferromagnetic material so j is the deciding factor for the behavior of a material so exchange energy is one factor of energy of a ferromagnetic material the another energy of a ferromagnetic material is anisotropy energy i am considering a ferromagnetic material and i am applying the magnetic field in two different directions for example here i have taken a ferromagnetic material which is a magnetite now i am applying my magnetic field in the direction 1 0 0 and when i am taking the second case i am applying the field in the crystallographic direction 1 1 1 we can see that the behavior of magnetic moment is different in when the field is applied in the two different directions as it is evident from the figure that when we apply the field in 1 0 0 direction then magnetic saturation is attained but we need a strong magnetic field whereas when we apply the external magnetic field in 1 1 1 direction then we need a field which is weak field so magnetic saturation can be easily attained this is the basic difference by applying the magnetic field in these two different direction the direction in which magnetic saturation is easily obtained is termed as easy direction 
and the direction in which we apply an external field and magnetic saturation is obtained by using a strong field then that direction will be termed as hard direction. The energy difference between these two direction that is easy and hard direction is termed as anisotropy energy. And this energy is a very important factor which determines the boundary, domain boundary conditions. So, if we take a same type of material and we take its two different direction and apply a magnetic field, then the magnetic saturation to be achieved is different in different directions. The another energy that we are considering is domain wall energy. We also term it as block wall energy. Here we have shown the spin alignment of various atoms. Based on the spin alignment, the wall between two domains is termed as block wall. This block wall is divided into two type of walls. They are thick wall and thin wall. What is thick wall? When the spin at the boundary are misaligned and if the direction of spin changes gradually, then the wall is termed as thick wall. So, here we can see that the direction of spin is changing gradually. There is no abrupt change. Then the wall between the two domains is a wide wall and it is termed as a thick wall. Now, here we can see clearly see the difference between these two type of wall. Here we can see that the spin direction has changed abruptly. Here the spin were up and here the spin are down. So the wall between a domain of spin up and abrupt changing to a spin down is a thin wall. The another form of energy for a ferromagnetic material is magnetostriction energy. <coughs> this is the material. Now suppose we are placing this material in a magnetic field. That means we are magnetizing our material. We can see that when we magnetize this material then on magnetizing it it undergo a change in dimension. This phenomena is termed as magnetostriction and the work done by the applied external magnetic field against the elastic restoring force is termed as magnetostrative energy. We are applying external magnetic field. This material will tend to remain its, in its original shape. That means the external magnetic field has to do some work against the elastic restoring force. And this work done in the form of energy is termed as magnetoelastic energy. So, these are the important energies which are related to the magnetic field. The important energies related to the magnetic field are exchange interaction energy, anisotropy energy, block wall energy and the another important energy that we have that we are dealing today is magnetostriction energy. 
थैंक यू स्टूडेंट्स फॉर वॉचिंग